So good morning, everybody. Um, we opened the um, the platform for you to join this this webinar. Uh, we'll see participants arrive, and we'll uh, we'll start at uh, eleven sharp. So good morning, everybody. It's uh, 11 o'clock on the 6th of October, and we start our first webinar in a cooperation of uh, European Parking Association, uh, POLIS, and the EU-funded uh, project Park for Sump. Uh, today, we talk about on-street uh, issues, uh, but not only on-street parking issues, but also curbside vehicle management. Uh, and we do this in a context of uh, seeing parking as a tool for uh, to enable urban mobility transition. Um, we are a large group today. Uh, we have uh, over 200 uh, registered participants, and we hope many of you will join. Um, so we need uh, good uh, good housekeeping uh, to manage that, uh, that uh, process. Um, so if you have questions for uh, the panelists, uh, do post them in the, uh, the chat or in the Q&A. Uh, both will be uh, monitored by uh, me as a chair um, and uh, also by the, the panelists. So you can interact with them also there. Um, the uh, idea is that we bring uh, the most relevant and um, most uh, most urgent questions uh, to the panelists in a short um, in a short discussion after three speakers have uh, presented uh, their best practice. Uh, the webinar is being recorded. Um, it will be made available afterwards uh, so that you can uh, look at it again or share with your uh, with your colleagues. Um, we also will produce a short uh, summary um, as uh, information to go with that uh, recording so people uh, know what uh, what has happened today. Um, so as I've said before, uh, the event is a uh, co-organization of, uh, of three uh, parties. Um, I'm working for POLIS, I'm Ivo Kre, I'm director there for uh, policy and projects working on um, uh, amongst others, uh, issues related to access regulations and parking. Um, we also work uh, together in this, uh, in this webinar with Park for Sump. It's uh, Europe's first research project on uh, parking uh, under a framework program uh, uh, funding um, since long. And the project works with 16 cities on uh, new uh, methods for parking and also integration of parking in, um, in the, uh, the sustainable urban mobility policies of cities. And in the panel today, there are two cities from the, the Park for Sump uh, group, uh, Krakow and Lisbon. Um, Finally, but not least, the, uh, the cooperation for the webinar is uh, completed by the, the European Parking Association. And we have the president of the Parking Association with us, Lawrence, who will say a couple of words of, of welcome. Lawrence, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ivo. Good morning to everybody. The uh, European Parking Association, POLIS and Park for Some, are delighted to welcome you all to this series of three webinars dedicated to parking management. The European Parking Association, founded in 1983, today represents 22 national European associations with their members that are composed of players in both the private and public sectors, investing in infrastructures and managing over 40 million on and off street parking spaces, decades of management experience in the static parking mobility, and a highly qualified presence of industrial partners in the technologic, technological and service sector. 
The parking sector is also an important economic activity in its own right. Within the EU member states, it employs over 450,000 people and has an annual turnover of around 70 billion euros. Most importantly, parking is a strategic tool as well as a significant revenue generator for many public authorities. Parking is a critical service in today's modern urbanized world. Schematically, we consider on-street parking as an activity dealing with the application of fees, controls, and regulations. In other words, space, time, and occupancy management. But there is much more. Parking and curbside management are intricately linked to a range of ITS and transport domains. There are fast growing strong interactions with uh, uh, logistics and freight, traffic management, traffic regulations, and circulation, EV charging and co-mobility, as well as multimodal travel, as parking is a key interchange point for many multimodal journeys. The business and management models of vehicle parking are seeing a transformation towards urban mobility hub type operations, accommodating, connecting, enabling modal split solutions. Smart parking solutions, in this case, digital connectivity, seamlessly integrate to smart mobility and smart city solutions. What do we wish to achieve with these webinars? High on the list of priorities of politicians, administrators, planners, and above all citizens, is the question of environmental pollution and hence the need to use traffic congestion to reduce traffic congestion whilst ensuring accessibility to urban activity areas for people and goods for work, study, leisure and commerce. On the other hand, low on the list of priorities tends to be the willingness to consider and use the integrated management activity of vehicle parking as an important tool, as Ivo said in opening, in order to reach this complex objective. The operational contributions to urban mobility management by the parking sector remain still today vastly underestimated. In other words, the level of expertise, the diversity of operational solutions, and the integrational uh, capacities are not sufficiently part of a general awareness. There are new mobility strategies in many cities where one of the objectives is mainly to reduce the use of private cars, in many cases necessary. It is progressively evident that the citizens, however, tend to increase the use of their private cars. Evidently, it is necessary to elaborate a more balanced solution, considering an ideal mix for different sized cities and towns. On this point, it is important to remember that in the 28 EU member states, there are 800 cities with a population of over 50,000 inhabitants. Of these, 18 have a population of over 1 million, 53 between 500,000 and 1 million, and 700 with a population between 50,000 and 250,000. So no one solution fits all. Modal splits vary radically as do the opportunities offered by different forms of transport. One factor common to many is the important presence of private vehicles, more often than not resulting from the lack of adequate, safe, and efficient alternatives. To obtain an effective transition to the sustainable urban solutions foreseen, we are convinced that it is important to enable policymakers and planners to have a deeper understanding of on-the-ground management solutions in order to facilitate strategy and policy decisions that today seem to be determined more by the presence of technological solutions rather than knowledge of integrated operational realities in responding to the new multiple needs. EPA is committed on the environmental issues as confirmed by our statements in the, in the 2019 EPA position paper. Today's presentation see the presence of key players from our EPA members, and several of the organizations present today are award winners of the prestigious biennial EPA Award for Excellence in Parking. Thank you all for tuning into this webinar, and I do hope that you find it interesting and look forward to welcoming you to the next events. It is with great pleasure and gratitude that I hand over to today's moderator, Ivo Craig. Thank you, Ivo. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, very clear, I think, indeed, the, uh, uh, we have to find ways to see the um, 
the parking sector as an, an enabler and a provider of solutions as a, a positive voice in, in the transition that is so much needed. And I think with these three webinars, uh, our uh, two organizations and, and one project uh, try to, to bring concrete uh, stories of how that can, can happen. Um, and we'll start with uh, with three uh, cities to to explain that uh, uh, three cities from the the south Lisbon Barcelona and and Milano. Um, uh, we'll start with uh, with Lisbon, who will talk about uh, strategic uh, options they have have taken um, in view of of uh, changing on street parking. Uh, after that, we have uh, city of, of Barcelona who will apply that uh, that story to the um, to the last mile uh, strategic approach. So also including urban freight uh, questions. And uh, as last uh, uh, city in the panel, uh, we hear from Milano, which will uh, look at um, uh, the digital dimension of, of uh, making this happen. Uh, but we'll start with uh, Oscar Rodriguez. He's a director at ML, and ML is the, uh, the Lisbon's mobility and parking company. Um, Oscar has uh, 20 years of experience, uh, or over 20 years of experience in parking operations, and he, I think he's an, uh, a friend and colleague to, to many of you. Um, so we'll hear uh, from him about the uh, strategic plan that will reduce progressively the supply for surface parking. Um, so I would uh, invite uh, Oscar to share his screen and his camera, and uh, I will also uh, ask the other uh, panelists who are still showing their video to, uh, to turn off the video. Oscar, the thank, floor is yours. Thank you, Ivo. Uh, thank you, Lawrence. Good, good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. It's, it's, it's an honor to be here with you uh, and, to tell, and to tell the story of the city of Lisbon. Um, let me see if there's it working already. Okay. okay. So uh, I'm going to show to everyone the, the, the strategic plan. It was a strategic plan that Lisbon has been developed from the last two years uh, because the city uh, just had, had the, the thought uh, and realized that the urban mobility is changing very quickly and new solutions are coming, are coming every day, like, you, like you, everyone knows. Uh, new needs, new policies, uh, and parking is a key player in all these changes. Uh, one of the rules of parking nowadays is to be very and fully articulated with the new city trends. Okay, um, the move Lisbon, uh, it's the name that was, was done to, to this plan, is a strategic, strategic vision for mobility, looking for the goal of 2030. Uh, it has been developed by the, the municipality with the help of the key players uh, of the city. Uh, I will just put a note that the, the team uh, of the city that uh, have developed this plan um, is a, a political team, of course, and the mayor has, has, has lost the elections two weeks ago. So it's just a note to, to, to the audience. Um, the plan is already done. The new mayor, uh, possibly we'll make some adjustments on the plan. Uh, I don't believe that he is going to, to change a lot because the, the new mayor that will start his mission uh, in the next month um, used to be a, a European commissar. So someone that is very fond of this kind of policies. So starting presenting Lisbon, uh, Lisbon data, uh, is a city of, of the south, uh, a very old city with, uh, with a lot of little problems and, uh, on mobility uh, issues. Uh, the, key, the key figures, the basic data uh, that I can show about Lisbon is we've got half a million inhabitants. Uh, it's, it's one of the, the smallest uh, city capitals in Europe, but we have two millions in the metropolitan area. So all the, the, the surroundings, uh, cities of, of Lisbon are, are uh, full of, of persons that usually and daily came to the city. We have 200,000 uh, vehicles inside the city that belongs to the residents. 
but every day we face the problem of getting 370,000 vehicles entering every day into the city. Uh, that's the basic problem that we face uh, in the last years. Uh, and to, to offer, uh, we have 100,000 on-street parking places, 150 off-street parking places, and uh, 120,000. This, this, this is another uh, particularity of the, of, of the city. Uh, we have 120,000 on-street parking permits. So we have more permits rather than on-street parking places. So that's what uh, started to, 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 to dis put the discussion on parking issues and is, is something that we are going to see across the plan. The strategic vision for the city of Lisbon has got uh, a key commitment. Uh, and that's one to the smarter and more sustainable urban mobility for the city. Uh, it's set on st six strategic pillars, uh, more integration, more trust, more connectivity, more accessibility, more innovation, and more responsibility. This is the, the six pillars that use, um, that show that the, the, all the, the mobility system should uh, fulfill and should pursue. The goals to achieve, it's simple. It's, the city wants to, to reduce more or less 15% of the private car use. The model split from 2017, with almost half of the, of the, the movements in the city are made with private car. And that's something that this plan wants to change uh, deeply, trying to fulfill all the goals that are settled by the EU. Uh, what kind of measures we want to do develop uh, to, to, to reach these goals, increase the use of public transport, integrate new mobility service into transport system, restrict private car access to downtown areas, promote the use of electric vehicles, requalify the public space and pedestrian network, expand cycle lanes network, improve mobility to and from school. That's one of the issues that promotes a lot of the private car use, it's the, the, the schools and taking the, the fathers taking the children to school, increase park and ride infrastructures, it, it's basic for us as well, and better coordination of the metropolitan mobility system, the connection between the other, the other municipalities and the municipality of Lisbon transport systems. This plan is working mostly in five networks and five services. The five networks, uh, the pedestrian, the public transport network, road network, cycle, and in public interfaces, the public transport interfaces, uh, and fully connected and linked to the five services that we can mix it all together over these networks, parking, shared mobility, urban logistics, additional mobility and touristic transport because Lisbon is one of the most touristic cities and getting very fast uh, uh, reference in tourism in South Europe. But we are we're talking about parking and the main issue is what's the role of parking in, in this plan, in this larger plan. And the main idea is the parking must be fully articulated with cities mobility system. It's a part, it's the immovable part, like I used to call the immovable part of mobility is parking. And this is deeply connected to all the, the different systems that uh, the city the city has. So the main issues on this plan and there we are facing until 2030 is to expand the parking management to cover the full city. We are not in, in all the streets of the city yet. Reduce the supply of on street parking in city downtown, trying to avoid. We have public transports downtown, so trying to avoid the, the rush of, of private cars in, in, in the city center. Build long term parking facilities, mostly and uh, uh, now, namely in the residential areas. Increase on street parking rates, pushing cars to underground facilities. 
Okay, the on street parking should be more expensive rather than the uh, underground facilities, underground parking. So it's, it's something that we cannot make the measure in, in one day to, to another. It's, it's a very violent uh, political issue to, to, to risk. So it, we, we have to increase slowly the price of the, the curbside <coughs> parking. Create bike parking offer rather on surface and underground, raise the offer of electric vehicle charging points, promote real-time information about on-street and off-street parking occupancy, implement the mixed use of floating bays according to time periods, because the activities of the city is it's very important to the city life, but during some, some hours of the day, they are not used. So if the the, the offer is not uh, enough to fulfill all the, the, the needs. Uh, this kind of places, this kind of loading base can be used for residents, for instance, or for other, for other purposes. Increase the offer of park and ride near major public transport interfaces and use parking spaces to promote the healthy use of the city public space. Uh, now I'm just going to show some examples of these measures. Um, some of those um, connected and fully linked to, to the use of parking places in the city and the new use uh, that the parking, those parking places are, are having right now and trying to, 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 to show what's, what's already done over this, this strategic plan and um, the changes are deeply, deeply um, happy uh, on my point of view. So this is one picture of the 70s, 60s, 70s, one of the, the main squares of the city, Plaza de Comercio, full of cars. It was one of the biggest parking lots in, in the city, but uh, it's not the way that should be done. The city have changed and now the same square is a very enjoyable place to, to visit and to stay and to just to, 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 to use it. Uh, as a public space. Uh, the same with uh, another square, um, a very recent intervention, um, always in the center city center in the downtown of uh, downtown area of Lisbon. Um, and nowadays it's like that. The cars that didn't disappear, they just went put, put it underground. The, below that garden, we have a, 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 an underground parking with 200 parking places. And the whole of the city have been changed in the last five years. Um, the places where the, the city was made can be made for just for cars, and these changes are are being made um, in, a, in in a strategy of the city to put the city for the persons and not for the cars. Um, that affects always and and also the parking, and we know. Even we, we, I work in a, in, a, in a parking company, a, a municipal parking company, but I know that we are also part of the solution. And even so, we should be able to change what's happening in the parking. So new, new kind of use um, for these parking places that just make it more acceptable, uh, more happy, um, for, for enjoying the, the, the space uh, and not just to put a car in it. So the, the, the public use of parking spaces is growing in the city. Uh, what used to be uh, uh, parking can be different things right now. The use of bike, the, the promotion of bike use and of the bike sharing system is it's nowadays uh, growing. Um, the use of parking just for, for the new habitants, the new vehicles, uh, for electric, creating electric charging hubs on parking lots, trying to change the, the, the combustion engine for electric vehicles in the city, and the promotion of, of cycle mobility and the bike, the, 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 the bike usage and the bike mobility is, is changing the, the, the reality of the city. Uh, some parking, even the bikes, they, have to, they need to park and creating safe parking infrastructures for bikes is also a, a call for us 
uh, even in on on streets even on off street uh, facilities so the city is getting some adjustments to new mobility standards which is something that is is being done and i believe it's is going to continue to be done uh, moving to 2030 on a more sustainable way thank you any questions that you want to you can put it on 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 the the, the q a or or in chat thank you thank, thank you very much uh, oscar also for keeping the time um i uh, a great story where you combine uh, changes in the offer in the uh, price and also in the functionality of, of the the on street uh, uh, spaces all all uh, combined in an in an uh, integrated strategy a, a multimodal plan where parking becomes an uh, a, a central one of the central uh, uh, connectors of, of uh, all the measures you you take um, there's one uh, one question I would like to highlight from um, from our the president of the uh, of the chair of the police parking working group Olivier Asselin um, you mentioned the uh, creating an offer uh, of off-street parking uh, after you have uh, reduced the number of uh, or in, linked to the reduction of on-street on parking, uh, specifically in, in residential areas. Um, how does that sit with residents? Is there an, an acceptance to pay? And is there maybe already capacity in a neighborhood that could be used, um, uh, capacity that is sitting within within private uh, buildings, being it uh, as, as parking or as an... Um, as, as, um, commercially available parking or parking that is available through uh, for um, for people who go to work or, or for shops or whatever. If, I, yeah. if you give me the, the opportunity to, to answer the, this question. Yes, please. Um, yeah. There are some parts of the city that the, the buildings are too old, they don't, they don't have parking at all. So uh, one of the needs is in these old uh, quarters of the city, uh, the residents, they even if they want if they want to pay they don't have the place to to put the cars on it so it's something that the, the, the municipality take take it as a challenge trying to find out uh, small spaces small areas small buildings that are not used uh, some stores some warehouses uh, mo the most next most close to the city center and use the ml as as as, as a, a tool to rent the, those places or, or or buy those places and transform and build some residential parking, okay? And it's 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 paid. It's got a, a, a not a commercial uh, price. It's, it's got a, a social price. I, I can call it like that. It's cheaper than a, than a common parking parking lot. But um, everyone that is a re resident and change and choose to, to this kind of, of infrastructure, they should return their parking um, uh, resident the parking cards, permit. I guess. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Card, yeah, yeah, parking yeah, permit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's a challenge. We have more resident parking permits rather than places. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. you have to make something to reduce it, to, to rebalance mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. offer. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you back later in the in a small panel as well. But we move now to um, to uh, city of Barcelona, uh, where we have two uh, two people from the um, uh, the BSM, which is the uh, the sister organization to ML, uh, but then in in Barcelona. Eh? So it's the uh, the mobility service provider for the city, uh, and we have uh, Anna Chicoy in. As a speaker, she is the vice general manager and the chief operations officer uh, of BSM. And also, Daniel Eichardt will join us. He's the head of strategic planning and analysis uh, at the uh, municipal company. So, um, with Barcelona being one of the densest cities in Europe, uh, they have understood that the importance of defining a roadmap towards a new last mile model. Uh, can be based on consensus of different economic, institutional, and social uh, stakeholders uh, coming together in an uh, in a strategy for the last mile. I also would like to quickly answer to Robert's question to say, okay, we'll make all material available, and I hope Lawrence also will uh, will 
uh, share his text of introduction. Sorry, I should have said that first. But the floor is yours, uh, Anna and uh, Daniel. Yep. Thank you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you in that webinar hosted by IPA and having the opportunity to present to, with my colleague uh, Daniel how Barcelona is working in a new model for the last mile distribution. First of all, let me take just two minutes to present our company, BSM. Uh, Barcelona Municipal Services is a public company owned by the Barcelona City Council. As you can see in this illustration, we manage a large variety of mobility services, such as on street parking, off street parking facilities, the bike sharing system, and the public network of uh, IB charging points, among others like bus stations and towing service. We have integrated all those services in an application as a mobility as a service application called a SMO, with more than 21 mobility services provided not only by, by our company, but also by private operators. We have also a control center that gathers all the data provided by the different services that plays a key role in their management, but also provide useful information to authorities about compliance and also about mobility patterns. BSM acts locally in the metropolitan area of Barcelona, but with an integrated and global approach to the mobility. And now let me introduce my colleague Daniel Aikar, who will explain how Barcelona City has approached last mile challenges. Daniel, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, so uh, as we all know, um, in recent years, cities around the world uh, are facing challenges uh, related to last mile distribution. Um, and today I would like to share with you a, a strategic approach that the city of Barcelona has defined in order to manage uh, last mile distribution in the city. Uh, you will see a methodology rather than specific strategies. Um, first of all, uh, Barcelona is a very dense city. Uh, if you look at the list of the 10 densest cities in Europe over half a million population, You'll see Paris in the first position, Athens in the second position, and Barcelona in the third position with over 16,000 uh, people per uh, um, square kilometer. So our friends from Milan and Lisbon, they are also in the picture. Um, but if we take a closer look to the city, uh, we can see that there are three districts, uh, Gracia, La Champla, and Ciudad Bella, uh, which have more than double the population density, the mean population density of the city. Um, this, these three districts uh, account for like 30% of the, of the city's population, uh, almost 60% of the hotel beds, uh, more than 30% of the shops, but only 16% of the surface. So here we have a challenge. Um, of course, uh, the volume of last mile deliveries in these districts creates uh, congestion, pollution, and, and many other externalities. And when we try to estimate demand for last mile delivery, uh, it's important not to forget that these loading and unloading areas in the city will be shared not only by those who provide um, goods, those who deliver goods, but also those who deliver services such as maintenance, um, repairs, civil works, etc. Uh, so even if e-commerce uh, related activities have grown exponentially in the last years, uh, at least in Barcelona, the volume of operations uh, by those who deliver services is still much greater. Uh, we, we have also an, another interesting place called L'Hospitalet, which is a city uh, that borders with Barcelona and is considered to be the densest city in Europe. So the first uh, idea is um, we live in a very dense uh, place. Uh, on the other hand, uh, for those who have visited the city, 
uh, you know that Barcelona is very homogeneous in its urbanism. Right? You can see the, the, the picture compared to other cities in, the, in that ranking. And however, each of these blocks is different. Um, so even if you see them to be the same, actually they are not. Uh, or each of these blocks are different from one another. It, it's very different if you have a hospital, a block of apartments, a supermarket, etc. So a single solution uh, does not exist. So in the case of Barcelona, even if you see this picture, complexity is still there. Um, and now I would like to move to the to that plan to our to our strategic approach. So there, there are many factors that are causing challenges in last mile distribution in Barcelona. We have put them into four families, those related to uh, B2C, uh, B2B, uh, logistics sector, and public space. Uh, in B2C, of course, we, we have all seen the, the boost of e-commerce, uh, but also how these uh, orders are uh, most frequent and, and, and most fragmented, more, more frequent and more fragmented. Uh, with also with a high number of failed delivery attempts that uh, put more pressure into the system. In terms of B2C, uh, we've seen some businesses like, like for example, I know, Decathlon, that have migrated from the outskirts of the city to the city center, or they have expanded uh, their facilities to the center with smaller, uh, with the smaller shops. Um, in the logistics sector, we, we see um, of course, poor working conditions as a result of, uh, of the big, uh, big e-commerce players having uh, a dominant position towards the logistic operators. And all of that is happening in the public space. And that's why all of that is very complex. Um, there are multiple interests um, and expectations. And is it required to find a, a balance? So what are the key challenges that we see? So we see an increase uh, distribution flow for B2C and B2B, and also a precarious uh, logistic chain and uh, reduced distribution space uh, on the street. All right, so we've talked about, about our city, uh, about our playboard, and, and also the challenges that we see, the main challenges that we see. Uh, now it's time to add something that is unique for each city, and that is values and priorities. So which city model do we want? Which city model do our citizens want? Um, cities, of course, can learn from each other, but each of them will need to find their own, their own model yeah? because solutions will be different. Some of them will be the same, but some others will be different based on your model. Uh, just to put a few examples, um, the economic model, in, in Barcelona, Barcelona thinks that um, we want a model, an economic model, which is more sustainable and dynamic, and that reduces inequalities and promotes local trade. That's a very important part for our city. Second, uh, the labor model. We want a labor model that generates decent and quality employment. And just another example, the consumption model. Um, we want a city model that raises consumer awareness and responsibility. Um, other cities will have other priorities and that's fine. Uh, they will work on them to define their own model. And we think that's one of the key ideas of, of, of the presentation. Um, after we have built this, uh, our vision uh, made, up, made up from these 10 di dimensions, we have identified concrete uh, targets for each of them. Uh, we can see, you can see some of them in this picture, uh, and you can see that they can, they can be either strategic targets, connector targets, or base targets. And how do we, how do we measure uh, the performance of uh, all of these targets? How are, how are they evolving? So for example, um, we, we want to track the, per the percentage of return deliveries. You can see that in target 19, no? the, objective, the objective is fluid, safe, and disciplined mobility. Uh, and another example, uh, target 16 will be sustainable logistics. And for example, the percentage of electric vehicles over the total um, fleet of, of vehicles. 
Um, so the lowest level of, of this strategic approach is made up from initiatives. Um, you can see 10 of them here. We have, we have more than that, but you can see just a, a sample. Uh, you can also see the impact, the estimated impact on the targets that I have mentioned before. Um, for example, let me let me talk to you about the last mile distribution pact, which we think is very important because it impacts uh, on all targets. Um, so uh, as we've seen, last mile distribution is, is a complex activity uh, that involves a variety of stakeholders with diverse expectations. Um, this new strategic approach uh, must be built on consensus and aligned with the city model that we have explained. The objective of this uh, pact, uh, well, providing a clear leadership, uh, so a commissioner with, with executive vision, the coordination of the stakeholders, and also, and very important, finding the consensus. Another, another initiative, uh, which is very relevant for, for today's presentation, um, because we are all related with, with parking business, is the new uses of, uh, for off-street infrastructures. Just let me let me explain you a couple of examples from our company. So in our network of of street parkings, we have distributed uh, distributed over thirty lockers uh, to pick up online orders, and also we are doing a pilot of eight uh, mini hubs of distribution where goods come during the night, and they are distributed during the day with a with a fleet of uh, sustainable vehicles. Uh, we are doing that in partnership with another company. And uh, just another example, uh, the marketplace. So Barcelona, as I said, Barcelona understands that the local trade is very important, is a source of uh, economic development and also social cohesion. Um, so on-site consumption is, is encouraged, but we also understand that uh, the digitalization of some of these businesses uh, makes them also more competitive. So the markets of the of the city, they are developing their own online marketplace where consumers can buy their products, fresh products, and then uh, collect them from the lockers or receive them uh, at home with a, with a sustainable vehicle. Um, but but not, not only the impact is important when deciding uh, which initiatives um, are to be implemented. Um, that's why we talked about the importance of finding the consensus. And uh, we have anticipated for, for this sample of initiatives, if the consensus is expected or the, consens the consensus will need to be built by this last mile distribution path. And you have an example of that. Of course, things like marketplaces uh, will be easier to implement than uh, the last mile distribution tax. And we need to know not that, we, we need to work on, on that. So uh, as a main takeaway of this presentation, I would like to, I would like to highlight the importance of understanding the, the playground. How is your city? What are the values and priorities of your city? What are the challenges that nowadays uh, last mile distribution are affecting your city. And then having a clear vision of what's your city model, having a roadmap, and having an organism with executive uh, power that is able to create analysis, build consensus, and make decisions. And, and that's, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Anna and, and Daniel. I think it's it's uh, super interesting. When we talk in Park for Some, for instance, about um, integrating parking policies into the SUMP, yeah, so the Sustainable Urban Mobility Plan, we we tend to um, to link it mainly to transport uh, oriented goals, yeah, so reduction of traffic, uh, modal shift, um, or finding new ways to energize uh, transport, yeah, so moving into electric. Uh, charging for instance um, but you actually link your 
parking policy, the management of the public space, to the the, the strategic choices the city has made in view of uh, of economy, of social inclusion, um, and I think that's really uh, remarkable. And it's something we we in our project will also definitely uh, follow up upon. Um, I have one uh, one question before, and then we will see each other again in in a short panel. So the um, when you talk about uh, about freight uh, on street, uh, you also um, um, you have this this policy of, of uh, multi use of, of parking spaces, eh? so that the, the use of the spaces evolves throughout the day. Um, so that was also the um, one of the measures you showed on on your uh, on your uh, sheet. Can you maybe um, go back and explain a bit the the acceptance of that specific measure because it's uh, and and how you come to that conclusion about whether it will be. Um, uh, it would be accepted or not. Um, so I see it as green, where you say consensus is expected, the multi-purpose parking spaces. Um, how do you make that assessment that it, it's green? It's because it's happening already and everybody likes it or? Um, no? Yeah, so um, basically the uh, multi-purpose uh, is something that we are um, starting to work with. Uh, so we are doing, uh, I would say, four or six pilots in the city. We are changing the, the vertical and horizontal signaling and trying to move from last mile delivery to regular car park space, depending on the time of the, of the day, because we've seen that uh, most of the deliveries are, are, being, um, are taking part in the, in the morning. So we this is not fully implemented we are doing pilots for that uh, of course for those who are delivering they like uh, that there is more supply during the morning and at the same time those who uh, prefer because they are using their, their private vehicles during the afternoon uh, they, they also like that there is also more, more supply so the the nice part of that is that uh, is the flexibility uh, and based on the analysis uh, of the specific streets specific um, uh, parking spaces, we are able to uh, adapt the supply of, of, uh, of space, both for uh, car parks or, um, or, or delivery. And, uh, and we've seen that we are working on it, but we've seen that is a, is a measure that makes sense, but it, it needs to be calculated. Uh, it's not something that you can do like in all the city at the same time. It's something you uh -huh. need to calculate specific for each. For each block, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Uh, okay, we'll we'll see you later. Uh, we move now to uh, Milano. Also, thank you, Anna. Uh, Anna, also for the presentation. Um, so we have uh, Roberto Carreri as a speaker. He's director of research, development, and digital innovation at ATM. Uh, ATM also being the the uh, mobility agency for the um, for the city of Milano. Um, Roberto has worked, for instance, on the uh, on the Area C uh, scheme, which you all know. I guess the um, the uh, low emission and charging scheme for the uh, the Mi Milan city center. Um, so he will present a very interesting approach. Eh? So where parking has always been the end of a journey. Uh, ATM in, in Milano wants to transform parking into the start of a journey uh, the departure of uh, using new modes, uh, uh, using new ways of, of moving in the city uh, and not the end of the, of the journey. So uh, Roberto, the floor is yours. Yep. Thank you very much, Igor. And uh, hello everybody and welcome to my panel. And um, very proud to be part of this team. And thank you for to to APA Police webinar for this uh, APA Police for this invitation. Uh, we will talk about mobility ecosystem in the city of Milan, the centralized mobility platform, managing and implementing integrated parking services, supporting mobility strategies. But before starting, let me introduce my my company. Uh, ATM is the public transportation company in Milan, fully owned by the municipality of Milan, uh, which operating on the public transport uh, in the urban and suburban area and uh, in uh, 96 municipalities around the metropolitan area. 
we make it uh, in a uh, with a particular focus in uh, innovative service and system for sustainable mobility, which is our mission. And um, thanks to many investments that uh, we made uh, during this year in technologies and the digital transformation processes for smart city as the vision that we have uh, for our city. We are trying to export our model uh, in, uh, in an international development design, uh, thanks to the participation to many public tenders uh, around the world about uh, public transportation operating system. Some numbers about our group. I would like to raise that. I like that uh, these numbers are, are the one, unfortunately, before pandemic. But you know, um, I would like to focus in particular on three of these numbers: ten thousand employees, eight hundred million passengers transported per year, two hundred thousand managed parking lots. 10,000 employees, it's um, not a usual number of employees for a public company. And uh, these numbers is at the evidence that we are trying to um, invest uh, every day in human capital and uh, to insource our expertise in order to be able to offer uh, the best service to our passengers in terms of public transportation, transported passengers, and parking lots managing every day. So today, main topics, uh, I will try to explain our point of view about parking lots in a, in a new paradigm. Uh, we, we, we are trying to move the traditional meaning of parking lots from a point of arrival to a new departure, a new park experience offering it to our customers uh, in order to be able to use every um, opportunities that are available in the street, in on street, that are available, that are available on street in the city. Um, and uh, um, this new paradigm, paradigm could be the way to transform uh, a static uh, park experience in a, um, in a mobility experience, in a global vision of mobility experience around the city. We will make it um, uh, thanks to a journey through Milan's mixed mobility ecosystem, and uh, we will investigate on the interactions among its elements. And finally, we will um, uh, talk about um, the strictly relationship existing between parking and sustainable mobility, such an opportunities an opportunity for mobility as a service evolution. So fasten your seat belts and let's start with our journey into Milan ecosystem mobility. Uh, let's imagine to be on board of our own car and we decided to park our own car uh, in the downtown. Uh, to make this, we have to cross the B area gate, which is the one, uh, the, the pollution charge area, uh, the C area gates, uh, the congestion one, and then finally, we park uh, we park our car in one of the several opportunities that we give to our customers. Um, for example, you have the possibility to park your car in both yellow or blue road strips if you have a permit or uh, for free permit or um, uh, or a payment in blue in blue roads in particular, according with your status, because if you have the possibility to have a, a, a resident permit, for example, or if, if you are a, a, if, you, if you have a status like people um, with, with disability, you have the possibility to park everywhere in, yellow, in both yellow and blue or in blue in, in, in your area if you are a resident. Um, or anyway, you have the possibility to pay for the blue road strips if you park your car over there, uh, thanks to many different uh, tools that we developed to, uh, to promote uh, the mobile payment or uh, using the parkometer that we have installed everywhere in the city in order to, be, to give the possibility to, to be compliant with the uh, regulation and, uh, and fair logic as well. 
we, we, we promote this also because we have the need to uh, preserve the correct usage of our park, uh, thanks to uh, many, um, and we use many different kinds of, uh, uh, of tools uh, that we have developed during this year uh, to check the validity uh, of each park uh, um, using uh, handhelds with our enforcement or Eagle Eye, which is a, a cam installed above a, ca a special car, which is able to check the validity of each park uh, by plate, checking the plate in real time and uh, checking for uh, the existence of uh, a permit or a payment. But um, how can we monitoring each step of this uh, on-street parking business? Um, Let's say we have developed several modules that uh, interact each other using a top-down approach. Uh, the first module is the one which is in charge of uh, access control management. Uh, the second one is the one that is in charge of payment channel management, concession processes, uh, obviously, if you have a, a particular uh, permit. And the one that is uh, that include all the previous one, um, because you know, permis, uh, permission delivery uh, process management is definitely um, uh, obtained by the possibility to have a permission by pay or uh, thanks to your status of citizen, such as resident or people with disability and so on and so forth, provided by the authority. But definitely is a permission to park. Last but not least, we have developed our roadside uh, uh, inspection and penalty process that is able to check all the, uh, the park, uh, the on-street uh, on park. And uh, if you obviously park inside a, in a street building, you have uh, to, to cross the gate, but uh, you, you need to pay to enter inside. But uh, the, the, the check module is probably the most important one because we can guarantee all the um, regular usage of our uh, of our parking lots. Um, in one word, operations. Having the full governance of on street and off street uh, operation is the key for our success. Uh, we think that uh, each um, public agency in charge of um, manage parking lots need to be able to monitor and to govern, to have the full governance of the all, all the phase of these operations, starting from the back office operations, uh, going to the field force automation, and, um, and have the possibility to check every phase of, it, of, of this business. Thanks to this approach, we have had also uh, the possibility to enter in, uh, in a continuous improvement cycles um, using digital transformation as a driver. We create a digital transformation mobility platform, which is able to collect every different kind of data, uh, providing by transit access controls, permissions, back office and operations, and payments as well. To think of an integrated mobility ecosystem, it's necessary to analyze the process and identify the interacting and cooperating ones. And to create efficiency and effectiveness, it's essential to allow access to all information in a transparent and transversal way. Our answer is digital platform, digital transformation, digital mobility platform, we say. Thanks to this, to this digital mobility platform, we created, we have created a, a plate-based uh, systems where each of these tile um, uh, uh, in, in, in this slide is fully monitored by our, um, by our operators in terms of checking information for the end user, front end, back end system operation and external data sources to check the technical data of the vehicles to check if this vehicle is compliant with our uh, actual regulation and payment system as well. But how can we move from a plate based parking business vision to a mobility as a service vision, such a global mobility uh, um, ecosystem. We think that we can export 
our business model from a, moving from a plate-centric vision to a account-based journey-centric vision. This means that we have the, if we have the full governance of the operation, starting from our mission, we can export this model and really uh, move from a point of, move the park, parking lots from the point of arrival to a new departure. Because if we are exporting our model to the other mobility vector available uh, on street, and we are able to create a really a mobility as a service uh, as a service uh, 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 ecosystem using on street parking as a new booster for this. Um, mobility as a service is definitely a journey centric experience. So we create our own uh, mobile uh, application, which is able to collect any different kind of mobility uh, vectors available on, on, the, on the urban area um, and integrated in, in, in these in, a, in a, a, a big, uh, let's say, payment hub, which is able to integrate payment solution um, thanks to several possibilities, several opportunities that, that we gave us to, that we gave to our customer uh, that have the possibility to send an SMS, to use the parkometer, uh, which is integrated with many other kind of features uh, developed for the public transportation services. And we uh, believe that this model can be export to the other private vector uh, in a, let's say, in an international global um, mobility as a service vision. Um, construction of an integrated platform to share data and information to offer users the best mobility solution, a solution which are um, convenient, fast, uh, effective, and this means transform the parking lots experience in a global mobility experience. Which are benefits? Okay, obviously sustainable mobility, offering a service that allow you to reduce the environmental impact with faster and more efficient travel. And you, thanks to this vision, to this uh, digital platform, we can collect many data for monitoring, analyzing, planning, and as we talked before, entering in a continuous improvement cycle, which is available also and effective also for our uh, local administration. Uh, we can offer value-added services to both the end user and the local administration to improve and to boost their, um, uh, their um, uh, parking strategy uh, uh, indeed. And uh, we also obviously generate saving with cost reduction and revenue increase. So my slogan to, to close this panel, Write your purpose in pen, your path in pencil. And thank you very much indeed for your passion to listen to me. Enjoy your park in Milan. Okay, thank you, uh, so Roberto. Very interesting. I think you, um, you, I, I started your, or introduced your presentation by saying that you are seeing the parking uh, space as the, the start of a new, uh, of, of a journey. Uh, I also think you, you see the entire parking system as, an, uh, as a starting point for, inter inside it, for this mass uh, revolution also. I think that's very interesting. Um, it's also something that uh, um, uh, I must say, I, an, on a personal note, I, I wrote the enforcement brochure uh, for the Park for Some project. Um, where also I, I, I saw this uh, enforcement cycle as some kind of an, an endpoint, but you present it also as a starting point to move into an, uh, a digital uh, uh, integrated uh, mass environment. I think that's very, uh, very interesting. Uh, good, we move. Uh, I would like to invite uh, the, the speakers uh, to the stage again. So um, I would be happy to have Oscar, uh, uh, Anna and Daniel uh, for a very quick uh, question round because there's, there has been a lot of interaction in the um, in the chat and in the Q and A already. Thank you for for responding. Uh, I would like to touch upon three uh, three uh, three topics: um, people, services, and uh, money. Um, starting with with uh, people. Eh? So we've heard about um, about acceptance, and you have. Um, uh, you have mentioned uh, that in your presentation, 
Daniel and Anna. Uh, also, Oscar has mentioned this. Uh, I would like to pick up on, on one topic with, with the three cities being uh, tourist destinations as well. Also a question in, in the Q&A. Um, is there a new audience there uh, in view of COVID? Uh, people who take the car to come to your beautiful cities for a city trip. Uh, is that a specific concern in the offer you have uh, in, in your parking policy? Specifically also because I think this is not an audience you want to see parked in the street. Uh, this is specifically an, a group that you that has the willingness and ability to pay and, and, and preferably moves away from, from on-street parking. Um, I don't know who would like to go first uh, on that. Uh, Daniel, you wrote something, or Anna, or Oscar, please. Yes. Uh, I was the first. I can I can ask you in the first time. Yes, yes. Uh, I believe it's the, the easier uh, answer for that. Uh, so mainly, uh, to, uh, the tourism has has has, uh, has been changed the, the the face of the city. And the last five years, uh, they they inc the tourist the touristic requests uh, have, have changed and have raised a lot. Uh, just um, was suspended during the COVID times, but uh, it's easier for Lisbon because no one's crossed Europe to visit Lisbon by car. We are in the head, dead hand of, of, of Europe. So mostly of the, our visitors came by plane or by train. So our concern for the city, for the city visitors is trying to develop a last mile uh, offer for with bike sharing, with scooter sharing, with small and 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 soft modes for the, those kinds of mobility. Uh, and the cities, it's it's happy and it, it's really nice to visit using that kind of modes. Yeah. Um, making some promotion also, also promoting the, the the usage of public transport uh, and helps and connected complemented by these uh, soft modes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Daniel, you mentioned, and Anna, you wrote about an, a specific offer for tourists in, in your uh, portfolio. Well, COVID has really affected uh, the, the, the presence mm. of tourists in our city, uh, but uh, now we, we, we can see that, th that they are uh, coming again. So, um, we, we expect a, a recovery in, in that sense. Well, all uh, the most part of the of the parking facilities have a specific offers for for the target of, the, of tourists, and, and they uh, try to attract them with uh, daily products uh, that made uh, the price um, uh, lower. And, uh, be, and and there is a, a, a variety of, of offer of uh, micro mobility uh, like scooters, bikes, for them to visit the city in another mode that is not a car because it's not uh, very comfortable to visit the city mm -hmm. with the car. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there are those uh, products, they are uh, specifically because in Barcelona we have a, a, a great presence of, of uh, French uh, coming and also the, from Netherlands and Germany, uh, they, come by car, they came by car to the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Roberto, and then I move also to the second topic of services. You, uh, you write, you want to go, you move into an, an account-based uh, uh, system. Um, do you also look at, at uh, foreign uh, uh, or non-resident uh, users of, of your system then? Um, yes, yes, we, we do. We are trying to do it uh, because um, this is the challenge. You know, uh, there are many opportunities for residents because they are aware about um, the mobile app available for do and for, for that, that are promoting this kind of policies. But the, the, the challenge is to uh, find out the way to improve our, um, our um, uh, let's say, uh, information system to the end user in order to be sure that uh, all the visitors are uh, aware about uh, their own opportunities in Milan. Mm -hmm. One of the most important examples in Milan is the one related to the 
let's say, you know, not, not on street parking, but public transportation, we uh, introduced uh, since uh, 2018, the new EMV uh, contactless payment for the metropolitan uh, network, for the underground railway network, and citizens, foreign citizens, and city user, let's say, generally speaking, are uh, have the possibility to use their own credit or debit card to tap on the metropolitan railways um, so that they have no boundaries, let's say, to, to, to know in advance our fair logic, our, uh, let's say, our uh, um, boundaries, our, um, uh, our geographical network, because, you know, they have just the possibility to make it up with their own support to pay for the public transportation. I, I think that this could be a, a good uh, driver uh, also to increase the mobility as a service uh, um, ecosystem for the private uh, um, uh, operator uh, that uh, give uh, uh, to all the user, also in surface, I mean, the possibility to use, for example, car sharing system, bike sharing system, and any, any other kind of sharing mobility using a unique support your own uh, payment system available on your on your back you know okay mm -hmm. okay interesting um yeah thinking of services the services we've seen also uh, linked to on-street parking in in several of your presentations was the the charging of electric vehicles there's been an intense discussion also in the chat about uh, the usefulness of bringing this on street and actually locking um locking cars on the on street surface for that, or locking in space for for a specific car oriented function. Um, just the, just one sentence for each of the cities. What your what your current uh, view is on that and and um, of on street EV charging and and if that is changing uh, at the moment the the perception or the the actual practice of that maybe again starting with oscar who also has answered in the chat about that already yeah just in one sentence yes on street on street fast charging underground on off street slow charging or regular charging it's it's the solution right now that we have okay sounds good barcelona and for as a very electrified city in the in the south also anna or daniel yeah I think that it, uh, we agree with Oscar that it's the same strategy. Uh, we have 10% uh, of our chargers are on street, the rest are off street, 90%. Mm -hmm. Roberto, in your mass uh, approach, is the, uh, the charging part of the that? Same, the yeah. same by my side. I mean, uh, that we need, uh, I think that one of the keywords is the alliance between among, let's say, public transportation, for example, public agency, generally speaking, and private one, in order to give many several, many different possibility to the end user to find a, a charging station around the city. So doesn't matter which kind of brand, doesn't matter which kind of price. We have to obviously to balance price with service level, uh, thanks to agreement between uh, public and private operators. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I had a third topic, uh, money, but I think we, if you could, uh, I, there's some questions in the chat also about how uh, the reduction of, of uh, street surface uh, monetization uh, is uh, is affecting uh, city budgets, is affecting your budgets as uh, as companies. But I, I, it's a very interesting topic. But we we will explore that in have to explore that in in a in the next webinar because we have to move to the uh, the, the new panel uh, who are uh, eagerly waiting behind the uh, the curtains to to uh, to present themselves. So thank you, uh, Roberto, Daniel, uh, Anna and Oscar for, for being here, and we'll move to a, a second panel. Um, Thank you very much. So I invite uh, Emma Littrot uh, to, the, to share the camera. Uh, I will, I think I uh, will uh, activate that myself. Um, the, um, uh, Emma is the Deputy Civil Enforcement Manager um, for Oxfordshire. Um, and um, she looks at permits and park and ride services. And in her presentation, she will talk about an, uh, a localized trial um, that has been uh, uh, 
that has been testing uh, the national uh, parking platform software. Um, so it's a bit in line with what we heard from Milan, uh, further digitization of, um, of parking uh, services. Um, so Anna, the, the floor is yours. Please do share your presentation and I'll disappear. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, if you can uh, push the little button at, yes, then we see the full that's slides. Better. Okay, you thank you. Yeah. Lovely, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you to the EPA for inviting me to present at this event to you all today. Um, my name is Emma Liptrot, and it gives me great pleasure to tell you all about the pilot we're invited to partake in. Um, in the creation of a national parking platform here in Oxford. So, as I'm sure you're all aware, um, to begin with, Oxford is a historic city. Um, it's a thriving city and we attract approximately 7 million uh, daytime and staying visitors per year. Um, on average, um, in comparison, on average, the arterial routes into our city centre um, see 38,000 vehicles um, pass through into the city centre on a daily basis. Um, beg your pardon, sorry. Moving on to the... the the, the pilot that we're partaking in, which is the National Parking Platform. Um, so what is it? Uh, the National Parking Platform is a publicly owned, not for, for, for profit national facility that enables, I can't see the thing now, let's move that over. Parking operators to communicate digitally with service providers. Um, the National Parking Platform um, project is funded by the Department for Transport and for our trial it's been led by Manchester City Council and is managed by Parking Matters. It is designed to aggregate information about parking space availability provided by car park operators and local authorities. So this mean it enables parking to be easily identified by anyone looking to find and pay for parking digitally. It also enables the integration of payment operations provided by mobile payment service providers. So how does it do this? The national parking platform uses the Alliance for Parking Data Standards, which provides protocols that enables the disparate group of service providers, parking operators, vehicle manufacturers and payment processors that make up the smart ecosystem to exchange information and transfer funds between the different organizations and deliver benefits. So a, overall a better customer experience. This is the concept. So the platform, as I said, is open to all operators and service providers. So we've got the platform in the center. You have the parking operators and local authorities, and you have the service providers also. So essentially using the APDS compliant interfaces, this will give multi-vendor payments, allow multi-vendor payments to be made. It will provide space availability information to the customers. It will also provide tariff information and provide parking session data. So as we can see, as described here, um, it can publicize 
occupancy in real time. It can accept payments and reservations and digitize compliance monitoring without need for local, I beg your pardon, sorry. Uh, for the concept. Now, the use cases that we have um, for the, the pilot is you have um, three cases here where the platform can determine, enable the customer to determine um, where a destination is to park, they can enter parking session details and pay via in-car apps and service providers. And they can also use the frictionless payment system uh, via NMPR when entering into a parking facility. So the information will go into the platform and then what this will, will also filter out through to our not forgetting the enforcement side of parking operations. So the payments can be made through a service provider. The information goes through to a national parking platform and then goes through to your enforcement company to enable um, enforcement of sessions uh, that have not been paid for. So to summarize, it can look for parking availability make payments on arrivals and AMPR frictionless payments. So at present, there are seven local authorities and three private parking um, operators um, embarking in this trial. Um, the trial covers both on and off street parking locations and there are four service providers able to take payments. In regards to the trial that Oxford City um, are partaking in, we've chosen uh, a highly utilized short stay parking area um, in, in the city center, comprising of 160 parking spaces. Uh, the, we have three service providers that will all be advertised on our pay and display machines. We have seven machines in that locality. Um, on average, we have 70,000 users per annum that use this parking facility. So we chose this to get a great deal of information from um, the platform, et cetera, and how it will work. So what we've done is we will have a, a single zone code recognized by all service providers. So we, we will apply um, information stickers to the side of our pay and display machines, which will enable the customer to either opt to pay through a preferred um, service provider but we have still kept the ability for them to be able to pay um, by cash or card. So the trial we are embarking on will last initially for a period of 12 months here in Oxford City. So we have um, contracted with three mobile app service providers for the course of this trial, well-recognized providers, I'm sure. And um, we will also have a telephone number um, advertised on the machines for those uh, consumers that do not have um, the, the uh, technological um, facility in place to enable them to pay by app. Um, we've chose one service provider. So we've designated one service provider uh, for the motto service, just to, just to, to tidy it up, um, so to speak, in regards to the, advert, uh, the advertising of the three participating service providers at this time. 
Now, what we see as benefits to the council um, in regards to the national park parking platform is that eventually it will, it will bring a shift towards cashless, cashless parking as a whole. So we could look to potentially remove pay and display machines um, to stop street clutter. Um, and also as we embark on an expansion of enforcement across Oxfordshire as a whole, um, we can start to look in the future at perhaps um, implementing um, a facility without the need for actual pay and display infrastructure in other areas across Oxfordshire. Most importantly, it provides a simplifi simplified payment journey for the, for the customer. Um, as a whole, a lot of people are embarking on uh, mobile app technology. We need to move with the times. We need to have these additional options available to meet consumer demand. Furthermore, it will bring about efficient enforcement patrols, um, enabling us to redeploy our officers to more demanding areas. And it will help the motorists make informed choices prior to traveling into the city via their GPS systems. Because as I've mentioned, they can, um, the, the platform will provide availability about parking spaces um, so that they can make an informed choice prior to traveling into the city center. And most importantly, it will help to reduce our carbon emissions in the city. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah. Very interesting, Emma. I think it's an, uh, a big change for, for you to go digital. Um, I have one question uh, before moving to the next speaker. I know um, maybe I'm on the, the wrong uh, Twitter uh, channels uh, <laughs> about parking, but I know that it's, it's super sensitive in, uh, in, the, in the UK, everything to do with, with uh, local parking policies and changes there. Uh, did you notice any... Um, Turmoil, people being unhappy as well, or uh, is it overall positive so far? Yep. Yeah, the trial, the trial, we will launch the trial um, by the end of next week, hopefully. So this is all new to us. Um, we've been working on implementing this for the past few months now. So, and we're really excited to launch it and watch it grow and then potentially we can expand it out across our area. So it's, it's a really exciting time. And I believe it will seriously take off. And I think the ability to have flex flexible payment options um, as we are a thriving city um, will, be, will benefit, uh, benefit us most, most greatly moving forwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll see you later at the end of the, of the webinar. And uh, we move to another part of, of the UK, to North Essex, uh, where Richard Walker is the manager of uh, a local authority parking partnership. Uh, he's based in, in Colchester, and uh, he'll talk about Park Active. It's in, uh, a BPA, a British Parking Association's initiative, uh, where uh, with the same approach as, as Milan or the same idea as, as Milan, the uh, the long stay parkings as are seen as an, uh, a starting point for uh, for active travel. Uh, so, Richard, uh, the floor is yours, and I will not make uh, the obvious uh, jokes of uh, a person called Walker talking about <laughs> active uh, travel. But now I did, so I'm. <laughs> floor Thank is yours. Much. Thank you very much, and good afternoon, everybody. And thanks to Ipa and Polis for uh, inviting me to to make a presentation here. Uh, I'm going to talk about Park Active, um, uh, which is part of a, a pilot the British Parking Association um, has uh, promoted. Just a little bit about myself and uh, our area first. Uh, I work for uh, a local authority partnership of uh, seven authorities in North Essex. We're about an hour uh, north of London, for those of you who don't know. Um, and uh, our area is about uh, probably about 100 kilometres across by about 70 kilometres deep. Um, and uh, in there is, is Colchester, um, one of the uh, oldest uh, Roman uh, and the oldest towns in, in, in the country. 
a few things to talk about here uh, to do with Park Active, where it came from, um, a bit about locations, uh, some barriers that we had to overcome, uh, the launch of our first scheme, and uh, what, uh, what might uh, come next. I mentioned the Roman connection with Colchester, and we have this grid pattern similar to some of the other uh, presentations have mentioned, and that makes it quite difficult to get into the, um, the town centre for us. Um, this last mile piece, uh, everybody likes to try and drive into the high street. Uh, so we've been looking at ways to try and minimise the traffic in the town centre. At the same time, uh, during the pandemic, we had a, a lot of social distancing, which extended the footway out using um, traffic management, and that narrowed the road. And also at the same time, uh, we've been looking to increase active travel across the town centre. We've got uh, a new north-south and a new east-west cycle route being promoted. And it uh, just so happens that one of these ends right at one of our car parks uh, as well. So the, these new cycle routes would take people into town um, and uh, would be a really good way to travel, uh, maybe um, to, to do the last mile either on foot or, or by cycle. One of the other things that we noticed during the pandemic was that, um, well, first of all, all of the, of the car parking um, revenue stopped, all of the journey stopped uh, for a short time during our lockdown. Um, but the long stay has been much slower to come back. Uh, and most of the companies, uh, most of the towns in, in, in the UK think it's going to take quite a while before uh, everybody is back uh, commuting into the, the town centres, city centres again. And maybe that's changed forever, um, the way we work. So we're looking for different uses for our long stay car parks as well. And um, the British Parking Association made this link and thought, well, how can we reuse some of the car parks that you would have parked as a commuter before um, for uh, the, the town? Also, the, the new cross town cycle routes will link our rail station, which is just out of the town centre to the north, and a park and ride scheme over to the north as well, um, and the hospital. So it's a good way to get about the town. So the locations we've chosen are about a five or 10 minute walk from the town centre, uh, and they're places which have spaces to park in, um, besides a bit of long stay parking and some residential parking in them. Um, so it's an area that we can use for other things. The space for the provision for facilities, so some other things um, on site, either cycle lockers uh, or maybe cycle hubs, and cycling into town and uh, e-scooting into town is something that we're also promoting. And uh, as a result of that, there's going to be a new cycle hub in the town where you can leave your, your bicycle securely in the town centre. I mentioned the new cycle routes across town, and uh, one of the car parks, the bottom one there in the picture, is the one that uh, is right at the end of one of these new cycle routes across town. Uh, and that's reserved road space. So we're looking to take road space away from being used for parking or being used for driving um, to have reserved cycle routes on the carriageway instead. As I mentioned, uh, it's geographically, it's a difficult town to get across. Um, you can't go around it from the south at all because uh, there's a river in the way uh, with no bridges across it. So people who travel in from the south um, probably wouldn't go and use park and ride, but um, this would give a good option for those people who can't use it to um, park there and either walk or park and cycle to other places in the town. Um, some of the things we had to overcome as part of this, um, Highway signage, um, the signage in the UK is, is very tightly controlled, um, but the Department for Transport has uh, approved a new sign for this, which is the park and the little walking symbol. And uh, we've made some use of that and some special authorizations being given for these signs to be used. Um, communication is a very big part of this as well. Um, and I think that's the key to making um, the people change their minds over, over this. So at the car parks, we've got these banners which uh, show people that it's a park active site. Um, and some of the things that they can do to use the site. We've got a dedicated web page uh, that people can sign up to uh, the system to use. And we've promoted it widely through social media, so through Twitter particularly, and we've um, targeted the, the Twitter um, uh, communication at different geographical areas to make sure that those people um, who could make use of it are aware of it. And again, in the press um, and uh, press and radio, um, so what we're trying to do here um, uh, for the uh, Park Active scheme is to have a community. So people would sign up and uh, the system is hosted on our app that we use for all our parking. Um, but we enable a special part of the app which gives people a discount for parking. And uh, we're also able to email and um, communicate directly with that community of people who use the system. 
the parking offer is at better prices than you can find in the town centre as well. So there's a bit of incentive for people to come uh, and use the scheme. We were going to launch it um, in the run-up to Christmas last year, um, right in the middle of one of the lockdowns as that happened. So we delayed that. We had a soft launch, um, and that enabled us to get a few more of the banners and posters and things ready uh, and to, to generate some more of the media messages. Um, and we eventually went uh, fully live uh, about April uh, 2021. So people are able to, uh, to sign up to the system. Um, they've uh, got social media and press messages about it. Um, and uh, so there's, there's some of the um, social media and other um, items there that you can have a look at. Um, having people use that uh, particular sign up also enables us to count them so we can measure the success of it. Um, what else is next? Uh, we've made a bid to the Department for Transport um, to have some extra secure cycle parking um, in, uh, in the car parks. And the idea here and with the park and ride is perhaps that you leave your cycle there um, and you use the car to get backwards and forwards from um, home to park and ride, but use the cycle backwards and forwards from park and ride or one of these car parks into town. So you don't need to tra transport your cycle in the car every day. Um, we want to make more use of this park and choose idea um, where people can walk into town uh, or walk across town um, from the different sites um, where they might be visiting um, either the hospital or going off to the football ground, which is out of the town centre um, or across to the rail station um, to, to get out of town. One of the other things that we want to develop is some lockers so that we can uh, have click and collect. One of the problems that we foresee is that people won't be able to take their shopping back to the car quite so easily if it's a bit further away. Um, and uh, this is uh, one of the things that we want to, um, uh, we're making another bid to, again, to the Department for Transport and DEFRA in, in the UK uh, to have uh, these cycle hubs and cycle lockers where people can collect their, their shopping from later, or we can have even deliveries to home. And that uses e-cargo bikes there. Um, and uh, we're trying to improve cycling provision with that. And then we want to work with the community as well, with shopkeepers in the town centres um, to develop different offers and the way we work with shops. Um, and finally, some more improvements around signage and maps um, and the walking time so that we can make it a nice um, walk into the town, a nice cycle into the town and let people know how long it's going to be. And all the time we're collecting data uh, and evidence from, from people. So I suppose that the background to this is to give people choices, really. And if a percentage of people can use the Park Active scheme rather than trying to get into the town, um, rather than queuing up to, to try and enter the town, um, it's going to take a bit more of the pressure off the street and that might allow different uses for the street and the curbside um, and different uses in the town centre. And uh, we look to pedestrianise our, our high street as part of that. Um, and just on some of the other things around cycling, um, some figures just in, um, between 2019 and 2020, cycling increased 46% in the UK and at weekends up to 200 percent and so it's been one of the big uh, big new things um, cycling in the UK um, and uh, yeah really one of the, the things to take off uh, during the pandemic. So there we are a quick look at um, Park Active for, for Colchester. Okay thank you I, may, I have one small question maybe the obvious question do you think it's a success uh, you haven't talked about uh, uptake or, or whether it's something mm -hmm. that's that's uh, a alive let's say in the streets is it working yes we've had some sign-ups to it and uh, people have started to use it we're one of 10 pilot projects in the uk um so i think this is the, the first rollout is in colchester for the scheme um so we're looking at it the the new cycle routes when they come in will add to that and we've just had this a scooter pod put in one of the, the car parts as well so all of these things that we're adding gradually onto the the pilot um, project as we find them um, but yes, we've had people sign up to use the scheme uh, and can communicate with them. And I think this will take off in, in other towns and cities around the UK as, as time progresses. Yeah, yeah. I also like the uh, idea to link it to uh, incentives and uh, I, that could also be an, uh, a real, uh, yeah, an, a real uh, enabler for, for the success. Okay, thanks, Richard. We'll, we'll talk you. at the end of the, of the webinar because now we move to, uh, to the east, to, to Krakow, uh, to an uh, old fellow, old, sorry, a, a long time fellow traveler, uh, Thomas Wolinski. He's the, the main specialist expert in implementation of sustainable uh, mobility projects in the city of Krakow. And uh, I must say, I've, I've, been in the city several times and you you see the uh, the change happen um the um 
the measures implemented in in view of, of uh, uh, spatial redistribution parking uh, sustainable mobility and uh, the city also has been always eager to to learn from other uh, experiences and also is, is an uh, a lighthouse for for many cities um, to to see how how change can take place uh, and we're happy to hear the story about uh, parking policies and uh, um, yeah, Thomas, the, the floor is yours. You also uh, talk about uh, what uh, the, uh, the Park for Some project means for your city. Yes, exactly. Um, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you to the organizers uh, for also including Krakow in this uh, excellent group of cities and uh, giving us the possibility to, to talk about our experiences. Uh, I would like to cover some some topics, uh, different topics. So more on overall parking policy and transport policy development, some new ideas and solutions that we have to uh, also implement also because of the pandemic, for example. Uh, our experience with parking policy audit uh, park path developed within the Park for Some project. I think that would be very interesting. It was not, not mentioned yet and um, our national law changes which finally enabled us to use parking management as a, as a really efficient tool uh, in, 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 a, in a vision for sustainability in a transport and also concerning the financing of that uh, different solutions. So basically Krakow is uh, lying in the south of the Poland. You can see here our Voivod ship, this, this red area, then the, the white ship is the metropolitan area. Uh, around 1 million uh, people living in the metropolitan area, a lot of students, a lot of tourists we have to also deal with. And uh, really um, concerning the, the model share, uh, what would be, uh, should be mentioned, we unfortunately since uh, many, many years, the, the car ownership and car use is still growing, but it and the trend is a little bit uh, slower now nowadays around 40 percent within the city are done with the pub, uh, private car but still a high percentage of uh, public transport use and really as as other cities already mentioned growing cycle use here we can see from 2018 uh, around seven percent of trips but uh, according to our latest uh, data we have uh, it's almost even 15 what we got uh, during the su summer season uh, concerning uh, the SUMP background we we could say uh, we should mention that currently we are working on the metropolitan SUMP the document the process involving all 15 municipalities who who are associated within a metropolitan area and parking program which has been uh, Establishing Krakow in 2012 is also one of the key uh, sectoral documents we have to include and we have to uh, also updating it. Uh, we have to take into account trying to uh, emphasize the parking role within our SUMP, which the time horizon for 2030. And concerning the, uh, generally speaking, uh, parking management, paid parking area, uh, the history is quite long already. In uh, 1988, it was the first ideas project of calming car traffic in the city center. Here you can see the photograph of the main square still with some motorized uh, vehicles uh, allowed. Uh, the uh, fees uh, have we started collection of fees in 1991 and in 2009 or we've uh, started using first parking meters. And currently our area uh, paid parking area is still growing and he uh, has now three sub zones and 19 sectors depending on on uh, on the sector uh, there are different uh, level of prices. I also think it's it's worth to mention then, for example, five, six, seven years ago, there's only one, there was only one huge paid parking area. So inhabitants of different districts could use the, their permits to move around. And it was not, not good, of course. So now it's more divided into 90 sectors. And for example, 
two years ago we've included Saturdays uh, to be paid from 10 to 8 p.m. And I mentioned already the parking program. Uh, what's, what's important that uh, what was the situation almost 10 years ago already? There was a big pressure to include uh, Cubator in, in many cases, uh, underground park, car parks were uh, designated, were planned in a different part of the city, over 70% of them uh, within the second ring road. That was the, the concept and also 17 basic and five additional park and ride locations and parking normative was uh, introduced, both minimums and maximums depending on different structures. And for the realization, uh, we could see that the parking normative was uh, highly used, let's say that was a successful uh, story but uh, not for cubital park car parks only three were built the same for the park and ride we has had not been able to build as many as as planned what were the problems of course very high investment costs for example we had we are the example um, from 2009 we had a first in poland uh, underground parking lot uh, built in a public private partnership uh, formula uh, but the city couldn't cope with the costs, so only two were built afterwards by, by the city itself. Uh, lack of agreements with shopping center managers, delays in implementation of some investments, linear investment, mainly tram, new tram tracks, new tramways. And so these park and ride which were built were basically connected to those new tram lines. And in, in terms of cubit or car parks, uh, some protests of residents. So now we are in a stage of revision of the uh, parking program. And uh, what, is, what is very important is that the main objective for now, which is included in the document that the parking system in Krakow should be condu conducive to sustainable transport and attractive public space. I mean, there is a whole, uh, different approach, different strategies that the parking should be more integrated into the uh, general sustainable transport uh, development and the attractiveness of, of public space is very important. And not just uh, trying to, to meet the, the demand for parking and also a new, some new means of, of uh, realizing these objectives, more focus on uh, bicycle parking, bike and ride, etc. So we are not really trying to, to meet only the car parking uh, demand. Some new ideas and solutions introduced uh, in several also EU projects uh, during last years. For example, we, we tried on this on a, on a pool side how to attract to, to the public transport with try to approach new inhabitants with some information brochures and free uh, tickets for, for seven days. These days we have to more and more cope with the increasing number of micro mobility operators and users and uh, around two years ago these mobility points were introduced when we tried to with the specific agreements with the e-scooters operators try to force the, the proper parking. This is, this is very important, very difficult, uh, but at least in, in some places, in some cases it, it works during the day situation. Of course, it's dynamic. It's, it's not so easy to, to cope with, but generally speaking, some parking space is, is designated for, for that. Also, we try to uh, introduce some smaller interventions like uh, transforming normal parking spaces in the city center into the kiss and ride up to five minutes. So that can be seen around the city center as well. For example, in front of the schools, that's some, some new ideas how to cope with uh, a lot of uh, parents driving to school. And thanks to this, uh, mainly thanks to this new park, uh, off-street parking uh, built by, by the city, we could uh, within a few years reduce uh, really hundreds of on-street parking spaces. Basically, 
the problem was uh, using the pavements uh, for parking. So here you can see some examples. We have some some uh, data on that, uh, how many uh, places were were uh, reduced, and that really helped to to improve the attractiveness for walking and cycling. In many cases, we also been able to, for example, introduce new bikes bicycle lanes to narrow the the road uh, the the traffic lanes, and in in that examples we. And we shifted, you know, reallocated the use of space, and in the same time, uh, count uh, car traffic on on that uh, on that particular street. Also, the bicycle parking has been a growing issue, growing demand for bicycle parking. So, in many cases, we had to, for example, liquidate two, three, up to five car parking spaces and uh, transform them into bicycle parking possibilities. For the park and ride, I said uh, the development is a little bit too slow. For now, uh, park and ride, uh, five park and ride facilities uh, available, and we try to promote uh, more and more use of it. Uh, concerning the uh, park pad audit, I would like to mention that the Krakow was one of the uh, first cities up from 16 uh, park pad uh, cities uh, who went through the process. To, to go through the procedure, let's say, through the audit. And generally speaking, the situation was um, assessed uh, positively, but uh, some, some areas were identified for refinement, like uh, park and ride, range and tools for information from drivers. So, I mean, we have quite a lot of uh, off-street also available, but uh, there is a lack of modern tools and uh, information provision, we have to work on that also for the public space design to be more specific concerning the district, concerning the area. But generally speaking, uh, we, we uh, sh sh show, show the um, park path uh, experience as, as very efficient for us. And we want to include it in a, our new parking program as a, as a future tool to assess uh, the effects of the program. So to continue with this approach and to have a park, but like every five years, repeat it uh, in the city. Uh, and, Tomas, um, yeah, you will have to reduce a bit the um, the story you want to tell about the uh, uh, the the revenue. So if you could be spend two more minutes and then conclude, that would okay. be great. Okay. Yep. Fine. So the revenues, I think, this is very important because. Thanks to the uh, new law in Poland recently, we are able to, we are somehow forced also to, to use uh, parking fees revenues to, uh, I will skip this, to, uh, to finance the sustainable mobility in basically public transport, walking, cycling, and some green areas. So in Krakow, it was decided that not, not less than 69% of income from the parking zone is dedicated for that and 100 percent of fines so for now it means around 40 50 million slot per year uh, to be uh, earmarked for these solutions and just to conclude uh, some some examples for we we can find us campaigns like cycle to work when we are really successful throughout the years for example we address almost 20 percent of of uh, people who used to use a car to to reach their work destination and a stars project already well established also shows that it makes sense to work with the schools and we have been really effective here concerning the re reduction of car trips in favor of cycling thanks to parking somewhat we can finance it so that's it. And just please uh, look also at the video, which is available on the Park for Some uh, web page. Yes, it's, uh, it's great. It's, uh, we'll also share that again uh, to, with the audience. Uh, thank you, Thomas. A very good, uh, good story. Um, uh, also, I like the, um, I mean, I've, I've said it before, I, li I like the, uh, uh, the progress that has been made and also the, the constant um, uh, interest or the, the constant push for change uh, now almost for two decades, I think. Uh, um, so I would like to ask uh, uh, Richard 
also to join again and Emma to be in the in the panel, share your camera. Um, so there's a bit of discussion in the um, in the uh, in the chat. I would uh, like to um, to start with the money. It's a topic we we couldn't uh, address in the previous uh, panel. But uh, so uh, Richard and Emma, you have heard from Tomas, who who has a legal requirement, uh, and they even go beyond the legal requirement to to respend. Uh, parking earnings into the uh, the mobility system is that an um, is how does that sound uh, to you does that sound like uh, <laughs> uh, does that sound nice would can you do these things or or would you like to to work in in that way uh richard maybe you you first uh, we, yeah. we uh, any parking surplus that's made out of our enforcement activity has to be used for reinvestment into either car parking or public transport or the environmental um schemes so uh, we have that, but that's only on, on our surplus. We don't ring fence a part of the parking fee yet, uh -huh. um, but I think that's likely to start thinking about um, environmental uh, aspects, uh, congestion and air quality uh, are quite big topics in the UK now. Yeah. Um, and air quality, particularly um, charging mm -hmm. for air quality um, management issues. Um, that's, I think, where the future is going to lie. Uh, yeah. Okay, Emma, yeah. Yes, I completely agree. The the money that we we make from parking schemes and enforcement, etc., is, is reinvested into the services that we provide from a uh, from parking perspective. Um, and again, I quite agree, Richard. We're just about to to do a pilot also on a clean air zone um, in the city centre. So it's it's all coming back to um, the future and and uh, things like that. So yeah. Mm -mm. Okay. Then the uh, yeah second topic are uh, vulnerable uh, vulnerable uh, users, but I think it's more also about uh, uh, people with with disabilities, um, which uh, have been mentioned in the chat as well. So the the idea that uh, um, I I think that's an, an issue that play, might play in in the three of your stories. Maybe starting with Emma, uh, do you take specific? Uh, uh, measures to make sure that uh, people who have the blue badge, who have the disability card, uh, are still um, taken up in the digital system? Yes, absolutely. Yes, we do. So um, with regards to our on-street facilities and with our car parks in particular, um, there is a facility uh, for disabled blue badge holders to uh, to park free of charge etc as we move into the the clean air zone pilot that we're um, about to embark on and with the pilot scheme um, we take that into consideration from um, moving forward with technology etc and, and we will be providing um, assistance and methods in place to to accommodate them moving forward yeah mm -hmm. Okay, Richard, you also have written in the chat that you, you of course, keep an, a city centre offer for people with, with disabilities. That's right. um, any further comments or um, observations? No, we recognise that the, yeah. the blue badge is really for access um, mm -hmm. and that people might need to make a number of stops and that people will be exempt from the pedestrianised park. They can still drive through the town centre um, mm -hmm. and they get free of charge parking in the car parks as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Thomas, how is that for, for Krakow? You have a large uh, pedestrian zone, plus also the reduction yes. of, of uh, on-street parking. Uh, yeah, I would mention that uh, all, the, all the projects recently dealing with the reduction of the on-street parking or introducing of a new uh, paid parking zone included, included specific design of uh, places, I think up to 10%, designated for people with blue card and it's also been visible also the better signage and uh, uh, i mean that was the occasion also to when when the reduction from from uh, pavements to include this this new uh, space for them and dedicated so that's that's really taken into account okay yeah. then i have a uh, one one maybe a a strange question, and uh, maybe you don't have an answer ready, but uh, we have two more uh, more webinars uh, scheduled, uh, EPA Park for Stump and Police. One will be about off-street uh, parking, and one will be about digital uh, processes. Um, what would you like to hear there, and or what would you who like to who would you like if it's a, a dream team uh, panel or? Um, 
whatever comments you have about the next webinars would be nice to hear what what would be your uh, topics or or people you would like to hear or cities you would like to see present um who goes first any inspiration no we have to come up with it ourselves <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know more about a parking account and uh, the way that we can use the same app for paying for lots of different things um, within the city. And I was quite interested in one of our earlier presenters yeah, yeah. talking about the parking account. Yeah, that's also what I wrote down. This idea that that from from license plate based to account based uh, that seems to be a big uh, big trend. I we noticed that as well, um, and that's of course something we we uh, we need to explore further. Um, I see Lawrence also rejoined the, the panel for, for final farewells. Um, so also for you, uh, please do put in the chat further ideas for next uh, webinars. Um, I would like to thank Emma and Thomas and Richard for being here on, on the second panel. And I'll, I'll quickly uh, share um, my screen to show what's up next for uh, the three uh, stakeholders to this um, to this event. Um, I hope you can see my uh, the presentation. Um, so do check the Park for Sump uh, website, uh, specifically for the trainings. Uh, there's a lot happening at the national level in, in your national languages. Uh, this week, uh, events in Greece, um, uh, events in Poland as well. I think Thomas has a busy, <laughs> busy weeks ahead in that regard. Um, the Polis Parking Working Group will convene in Gothenburg on the 30th of November. We'll issue an, an invitation for that soon. Uh, and we will be back with uh, more webinars. Uh, the dates are fixed. 8 December, we talk about off-street parking. Uh, second, 22nd of March, uh, we'll talk about uh, technologies and uh, digital data standards. Um, and both our organizations also have uh, big conferences ahead. Uh, Polis conference in uh, Gothenburg with an, uh, a parking session, of course, and the EPA's uh, and, uh, biannual uh, Congress takes place in Brussels next year, uh, 12 to 14 September. So that's it for now. It's one o'clock. Last words by Lawrence, and then we close uh, shop for this time. Uh, yep. Thank you, thank you, you all really the last words, um, as you said to, um, to uh, our friend from, from Lisbon, um, we, we're one sentence to close, uh, we're talking about parking, uh, we're talking about the way the cities can keep moving, and I think in the end we can say that uh, today has been an excellent illustration of the fact that parking management is really helping and keeping the cities moving. And this is uh, uh, an important contribution for, for all of us. We're looking forward to seeing you all at the next webinar. Uh, the, the next webinar will be showing the degree of uh, expertise and the degree of adaption that uh, parking structures throughout Europe are uh, undergoing to uh, integrate to new uh, mobility services. Um, obviously, uh, the parking sector is supporting these, and I think there will be some really important eye openers to help everybody understand just how much the contribution can be. So, uh, thank you so much to to everybody for their really important contributions. It's been a, a fascinating couple of hours, and. Uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you all again, and a big thanks to you, Evo, for a great job as uh, the 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 moderator of the morning. Thank you. And Isabel, uh, Friederike, and Niklas also exactly. Uh, exactly. as the exactly. in the background. Huh? Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, and we'll uh, yeah we'll end it here. Bye, and see you uh, on the eighth of December, hopefully, or before. Thank you very much.